Okay? So let's drop some terms. Starting with this one. Is it zero? It is zero under steady state, right? We know that VR is zero. So VR here is zero. V theta is zero. Vz is not. Does T change with respect to Z? Yes. So this term must be kept. Does T change with respect to R? Yes. So this term must be kept as well. T does not change with respect to zeta. This term is dropped. T, do change, T does change with respect to Z. This term is kept. Okay, then for this term, if you assume that the flow is not fast enough for viscous heat, you can drop the whole term. You don't need to worry about this anymore. Okay, but if you do not sure, if you are not sure whether or not we should drop this term, just keep it for the moment. Just keep it for fun. Okay. So look at this heat dissipation or energy dissipation term. Vr is zero. Zeta is zero. R here is zero. Okay. Vc does not change with respect to z. The whole term is zero. V zeta is zero. R is zero. Vc does not change with respect to zeta. V zeta is zero, okay? V r is zero. This term must be kept because V z does change with respect to r. V r here can be dropped, it's zero. V zeta is zero. And the whole term here does not change with respect to zeta, becomes zero. All right? So as a result, if I plug the whole energy dissipation term back to the first equation, what you have would be something like this. Now we have four terms. And the equation itself is too complicated to be solved. So among these four terms, which term can be neglect? So starting from that equation up to here, everything is absolutely right, 100% correct. Okay? But up to this point, it is too much for our ability to solve. So from here down there, you need assumption. So the correctness of your solution is decreased to trade off with how to come up with the solution. So we need to start dropping terms under some assumptions. Which term among these four can be further dropped? By doing that, I mean, if you want to drop further, you need to understand the meanings of each term, okay? 
What does it mean for this term? What does this term mean? This one has something to do with CP and rho, okay? It is directly related to convection in Z direction. This is convection term in Z direction. This one is gradient of temperature with respect to R multiplied by thermal conductivity. So it is in form of Fourier law. This term is conduction in R, R direction. Again, this term is second derivative with respect to Z multiplied by um, thermal con conductivity. So this term is conduction in Z direction. And then this term is viscous heat. All right? So you have conduction in R, conduction in Z, convection in Z, and viscous heat. Which term can be dropped? Viscous heat, right? So if you think it is too much to be solved, this term can be neglect first. Because it is viscous heat. So you have three terms left. Can you solve it? Yes? Good. No. If you do not, if you cannot solve it further, just drop more terms. Which term can be further dropped? Which is less important among these three terms? Now it's the matter of direction. You have R direction and Z direction. In R, we have only one kind of mechanism, conduction. In Z, you have two kinds of mechanism, conduction and convection. So comparing in Z direction, conduction here and convection here, which term is more important? Convection. So therefore, conduction term can be neglect. This one is conduction in Z. All right? You can see that from the picture, water here flowing downward. Up here, temperature is low. You heat it up. So down here, water temperature is higher. Conduction in Z direction is supposed to go up, right? So heat flux according to conduction in Z direction should go upward. This one is conduction in Z direction. It's go from higher temperature to lower temperature according to Fourier law. But you can always see that, of course, convection in this direction, convection would go along the flow. Convection would go downward. This is convection. Convection is definitely dominating in this case. So therefore, this term can be dropped. All right? Now you have two terms. Can you drop further? Now you cannot, OK? You have to try to somehow come up with solution with this, all right? And for the examination, this is too much. This is too much for examination. If I'm going to give this kind of problem for examination, I'm going to ask you to just stop here and then identify boundary conditions. What would be boundary condition in our case here? 
how many boundary conditions do we need? We have only this part of the equation. How many boundary conditions? Three. One with respect to Z. Two with respect to R. Okay? So our boundary condition, the first one as Z equal to zero, any R, you have T equal to input temperature, T zero. Then two more boundary conditions with respect to R. So at R equal to capital R, any Z, what do we have? Q is constant. So Q here should equal to minus K dt by dr at r equal to r here is equal to constant flux q0 okay third one at r equal to <coughs> zero right you don't have any other choice either at the rim or in the center at the center here at r equal to zero any z, what do we have? We have temperature profile at r equal to zero here, supposed to be zero, because the temperature profile is supposed to go to have uh, inflection point. Okay, you expect temperature profile to be hot outside and cold inside. At the surface, temperature is higher. At the center, temperature is lower. But there's supposed to be some uh, inflection point. Here, differential of temperature with respect to R becomes zero. OK? Any question?